If you just look at all of the numbers that you guys have been reporting week after week, you'd have to say that the consumer is in very good shape, in as good a shape as I've, I've seen uh, this consumer. And obviously, GDP is driven by consumption. And, so, so, and, and the numbers are good. I mean, you've watched retailer after retailer um, per, you know, putting up really good numbers. Top and bottom line. So, and, and even raising earnings and, and guide, guidance in some in some cases, and getting no credit for that, by the way, in most in, in most cases uh, for their uh, stock price. I think that has nothing to do with how the consumer is responding. I think the consumer is healthy. I think the consumer is spending. I think the stores are busy. I think cons you're watching now. More and more co consumers are shopping both online and in-store, uh, and I think that's really good for business because they spend more when they're in a physical store than they do when, they do when they're online. So to me, I think uh, we're set up for a, a very decent uh, finish to the, to the year. Is part of the problem, though, that the retailers' margins might get hit a little bit on a lot of fronts? We're, we're talking about several issues. If, if you're yeah. buying online and in the stores, that's expensive for the retailers to try and figure out how to fulfill all those issues. You've got retailers who are having to pay up, pay more for staff than they have in the past, and then you have the trade talks looming. And and if anyone's going to get hit hard, it's probably the retailers who will. Yeah, I, I, I hear all of those arguments, and I think uh, most uh, there's going to be a mix, Becky. There's going to be retailers that are going to be winners and losers. I think that's not what has been sorted out yet, but it's clear it's it's clear to those of us who I think you know spend our, our lives as uh, students of this business, knowing that there's going to be winners and losers here that are going to shake out over over time. It shouldn't be that complicated to see the, see them, and the ones that are going to be uh, winners are going to be the ones that are going to work through all of those various issues. And I think they're, they're all solvable. Every one of those issues is solvable. The, the industry itself is how close to, um, is it halfway through store closures that, that need to be done given the, the, the new environment, the, the, the online versus bricks and mortar uh, that you tried at Macy's? Well, I, mean, think, I, I think, well, are, okay. we, are we halfway through, three quarters of the way through? It, it, does it match the demand right now for people willing to go? I, I, this is what I believe. There, there has been, I've said this for a long time, there's been an oversupply of physical retail stores in this country. And it's this country, by the way. This country is way overstored. We're at, we have 23.2 square feet per human being in the United States versus 16 in Canada and 4.8 in the UK and then they get smaller from there so so we're just way overstored so there has to be a contraction uh, I can tell you in the case of Macy's two years ago announced that they're gonna close they, they and they've done this close 20 percent of their stores Joe the answer is no we're not because because the industry has not closed that's painful percent of their stores. So there's gonna be there is gonna be more of that but that's a, that's what has to happen because as this shift to online has occurred which has been you know the, the reality it's, it's still only about 10 or 11 percent of all, all retail sales by the way but it is it is growing you have to get rid of 10 or 11 percent of the physical stores just because of that and that hasn't happened so that the answer is no we're not there yet but when that does happen over time supply and demand is back that's when you'll see the physical stores begin to have grow you again. seen any clever reuse of the space is there anybody out there that you say okay I've see, I could see what the future actually looks like Meaning in these in these malls that are otherwise turning into sort of empty ghost towns. Yeah, I, well, I, I can tell you that I've seen some very interesting changes and evolutions, revolutions of of, of shopping centers. I can't tell you the results yet, um, but I was I was recently in Century City, California, which is a which is a really a fantastic uh, neighborhood, if you will. But uh, frankly, it uh, was a mediocre mall in terms of overall performance. And they've done a phenomenal job of the West Westfield Mall of redeveloping that center. And they brought in, you know, everything from uh, Whole Foods to, uh, 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 I forget, uh, uh, the, um, the big restaurant right. format, okay. but, but Soul Cycle, you know, all, those all, all these different things. So there's sports activities, there's, there's concerts being, being done there, there's, there's theater being done there. So I'd say that we've moved from like 10% to 25% non-fashion retail in that center. I think something like that, some kind of mix like that makes sense for the future. When you talk about the strength of the consumer, there's obviously been, I mean, you know, jobs are growing, incomes are growing. Um, the retailers seem to have kind of figured some things out as well during this, this phase, but also there's been a come back and people actually buying clothes again, right? For a while, it was sort of seen this secular decline, and you have some pricing there. Is that sustainable, or is there just kind of a, a burst? Well, I think, fa I think fashion is, is hard to call sustainable. Yeah. You know, I think that, 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 you know, consumers have demonstrated a willingness to shift from category to category. There was a 
big run for accessories for the last few years of shoes and handbags and accessories and, and jewelry, and that ended up taking dollars away from apparel. Now you're starting to see shifting back into, into apparel, but I don't think that's uh, necessarily what retailers focus on. And the, and the, and the good news about a, a multi-category retailer is that you can shift your inventories to respond to what's happening.